video. I really did not feel like recording this today. So a little while ago, I was at one of those nerdy gaming stores, and I was looking down the D&D miniature aisle, and I realized that D&D miniatures are, like, really expensive for no reason. For just, like, a little tiny piece of plastic. And for the longest time, I've wanted to make a custom miniature of my little D&D character. My little... My little rogue pirate clown Kenku named Jingle that I've been playing in a campaign that I've been running with Julian and JJ and Ron and Sander. So anyways, I went to the store about maybe... I'm gonna say what month is it? February? I went to the store like over... January? But anyways, I went to the store and I bought some cheap craft supplies, you know, paint, clay, and I figured, what the hell, I, I've seen enough YouTube videos of people making cool little clay things, and I wanted to make a, make a video of me making cool little clay things, so, I've, and I've been putting off this video for, like, forever, so, I figure today I'm gonna, today I'm gonna be making little D&D &D miniatures out of air dry clay and cheap paint. So before I get to the actual, you know, painting and making this I might as well show you what stuff I bought. So we have Crayola air dry clay, which I haven't opened yet, and washable Crayola paint. Which I did open because I painted a door. <laughs> Anyways, I guess I'll show this stuff off. You know, got all your uh, primary and your secondary and your third airy. No, just primary and secondary, I think, colors. Is 10. The clay. Which I hadn't opened. I hope it wasn't secretly open and dried out. It smells kind of good. Ooh. It kind of looks like it looks like drywall, but like gross ice cream and sand. So without further ado. minifigure time. Ugh, clay. I hope this camera angle's alright, because uh, I don't really want to change it. I might at some point, but... Alright, so I don't have anything to compare this to size-wise, other than dice. Oh, wait, yeah, I do, actually. Hold on, I have other... I, yeah, wait, no. This lovely little archer fellow. Archer fellow. So I'll probably put. I'm th here's what I'm thinking. We put clay on the bottom of it to kind of make like a little base of some kind. Right? Just so it's to scale. Should probably put a lid on this so that I'm not actively drying out all the rest of my clay. I'll get to that. Alright. Oh god. Ugh. I don't have any sort of anything I can. Sure, that's better. Alright. I'm not. My little big stand. Ta da! Alright, so. Now we need kind of a little, I should probably be pulling up like a reference for what he looks like actually now that I think about it instead of just winging it. So let me do that real quick. Alright, got it pulled up. So I'm thinking I'm going to do the legs first. 
right? Legs. This will be very accurately scaled, I'm sure. So you see, his legs are looking kind of thick right now, but I'm thinking that it'll be fine because he has big pants, or at least I drew him with big pants. So I think what I'm gonna do is... Kinda... I watched that one play guy on YouTube, so I'm kind of a professional. I can't really see what I'm doing. His legs are kind of just loosely attached to his body, so I'm thinking I'm going to put a little loincloth type thing over his, over his legs to kind of cover it, to hold it in place, I mean, sorry, I'm just yapping. I need something to cut it with. I don't exactly have cutting things on here. So instead, I'll use the corner of a packet of Benadryl. No, oh my god, oh my hand. At least I want to cut the top off. Isn't that nice? I would kill for a better camera. I think I'm gonna need to blend this with that, but I'm no professional blender. <laughs> gonna try to get a little picture with my phone so I can show you guys. Alright, now there's kind of like a little belt that runs over the top of his loincloth, so. I'm gonna do that next. It keeps chipping and cracking. It wants to stay one solid piece instead of wrapping around. Okay, so it looks pretty all right. The belt is a little thick, but it's okay. The back, there is kind of like a little, can't really see it, I'll take a picture. There's kind of a little part that's cracked, or like doesn't blend right. I'm thinking I'll put like a little kind of tie there, where he tied his belt. Get your, your McSam- Okay, 
I am gonna cut off the sleeves so they kind of come off to like a flat point. Ta -da. His arms are gonna have to be outstretched though, like that. Because I don't, or maybe like resting on his hips kind of, because I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit them kind of in that little space between his hand, his shoulder and his belt, I guess. I'm going to work on his little kind of neck thingy. Thinking we're gonna have to redo this. What if I do little fingery indents instead of cutting it? Because it doesn't have to remain completely identical to the drawing if I want. Alright, alright, this is looking okay. Alright, 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 alright. Okay, okay. Alright, okay. I kind of kinda of like that. It has kind of almost a kind of rough texture to it. I kinda of, I kinda of like it. Okay, so I guess to fill the kind of dead air while I'm just making things, I can talk a little bit about my character maybe. Or what I kinda of think that he is. He's a Kenku Rogue, right? Just because Rogue was the best class that would fit with... I got Taco Bell. What the hell? What was I talking about? I don't know. Kenku Rogue Pirate. Essentially... Uh... Actually, hold on. I'm going to put his neck thingy on before it dries so that it doesn't look like a horrendous mess that didn't really make sense what i meant to say was i'm gonna put his neck thingy on before it dries so that it, it's not like impossible to try to maneuver around his shoulders and things and i'm going to make a little indent in the center of it where his head can kind of rest. Okay, we will leave that there for now. And then while I figure out what part to do next. Okay, back to the backstory. He was a slave. And then he was kind of sold to a Kenku pirate group. And, you know, they were clowns. So he kind of traveled with this pirate troop and learned to speak common because of how many places he's been around the world also because I just don't think it would be very fun to not be able to say any words as the character though that's kind of the whole Kenku thing I think I'm going to cut off the bottom of his feet I just chopped like fucking half a foot off of his height I'm an idiot actually I guess I could use it to like kind of connect it with his lower legs like his feet, I mean, you can connect that to the base. All right, I think this is good to kind of set to dry now. But I have to first make little parts that will be his feet. Just stick here and make sure they work, and they do, and we're good. All right. 
Now I'm going to let this all dry while I go eat some food real quick. And I'll be back. Okay, so these didn't really dry all that much, but um, I don't really care. So we're gonna continue. I made a little head. Okay, so as I'm getting out more clay, I was thinking about how I'm gonna paint this. And uh, I don't really wanna have to wait for it to dry all the way before I paint it, because I'm lazy. So I'm probably gonna end up painting it while it's still a little bit wet. Is that the best idea? Absolutely not, but oh well, it's a video, so who's really gonna care? So I think what I'm gonna do next is add the kind of like pose to the little patas on my stand. It's frustrating how small I have to make these. I might be able to get away with just like kind of making like a flat little thing. I'm putting it here and carving out feet, but I don't think I can at the same time. So I'm just going to pray that this works. This is probably gonna be really like blurry and not fun to watch at all. <laughs> Alright, and we are almost done with these toes. And now I just need to kind of carve them out a little bit. Who knows, maybe if this little sculpture ends up good, or at least passable, I'll end up using it. Look at those tootsies. And now I have to kind of make a part of he legs. No, his ankles, that's what they are to make a part of his ankles that attach to the rest of his foot. So I'll probably take kind of a little thing like that, cut it in half, and put, it, put one on each foot. I gotta make sure that the feet actually connect to the ankles. So I'm like having to mush the new clay to the half dry clay. I have a feeling one of his legs are gonna end up thicker than the other. All right, those are the legs. I'm not gonna attach him just yet, at least not completely. Oh yeah, this side's gonna need to be way like thinner. Alright, yeah, that will fit nicely. If anything, I can just get like super glue or something. I and, absolve like, you of your sins. Oh boy, alright, arm time. I hope this is entertaining, if at all. I think I'll just put on his head. Fall. All right, I really like this actually, kind of. So I'm going to make his hood because he's going to have a hood. Because I really don't feel like carving out little feathers. He looks so goofy.
<laughs> oh my god, he looks so stupid. I love him. Okay, I'm going to leave that to dry for a little bit. Let's see if we can figure out something else to sculpt in the meantime. I guess I could get started on his beak. Or I didn't really make the little tail kind of, not tail, but like the little point that comes off of his hat. I got a drop to my lorry. I kind of like that. Alright, now I have to set him to dry for a little bit. I'm back again. So there's not that much left to do, really, at all, in terms of sculpting. Except maybe a tail, if I decide to do that, his beak and his eyes. So we have the top kind of beak, maybe. Bye -bye. And there we go. Alright, so while we are waiting for my little jingle figure to dry, in the meantime, just to get the hang of it, I'm going to try to paint this little miniature, but with, you know, Crayola brand paint. Just to see if it's easy or not. I'm not really going for any specific color scheme on this. White for a loincloth. It's kind of light cloth color. White for skin. Yeah, I'm gonna be completely honest, I think I might have done something wrong here. So now that I've gotten a good amount of practice in, I think it is about time to start painting my little jingle figure. It's time. So I guess first I'll just do, there is no brown. I'll mix colors on here to make a brown for his kind of color. Not too much, not too much, not too much. Oh my God, it looks like Halloween. Is that satisfying? It looks like Halloween and nothing else. Alright, so hood everywhere except for the front of his hood. I could be using a better, bigger brush for this. Right. Alright, here's how we look so far. Alright, now we need like purple bluish. Oh, actually. This might just work. Black in it too.
Oh my god, no, his legs broke! Of course, you know, I gotta put my initials on the bottom. S. M. For Stylus mos Mosquito. Alright! And now, with that, my D&D figure is done. Boom. And that was me making my own little D&D figure. The video. Was it fun? Yeah. Was it expensive? No. Would I do it again? Probably not. But anyways, overall I would rate the experience maybe like a, an 8 out of 10. It was kind of fun. I will probably not be using this in D&D. Okay, so two weeks after recording this video, I did end up actually getting an official, like, actual D&D Kenku miniature, which I ended up painting, and this is how that turned out, so I... Yeah. End of video.